Yo, YouTube, what's up, lads? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Obviously, it is your favorite mums here. Um, so it is day four, and we're about to bring you guys tip four. This is actually a really, really important tip. Uh, it's going to help you guys make a lot of money, especially early on in the game. Um, and it's just something to keep your coins ticking over. Quickly, though, I didn't know this, okay? So obviously, as you guys can see in the top corner up there, I've been playing NBA, like I have been for the last few days, while FIFA uh, is finished at the moment. I'm waiting for FIFA 21. I scanned my face in, and this is what it came up with. Does this look like me? Look, ignore the, the mohawk, all right? Ignore the mohawk and stuff like that. Just look at the face. Does that, that doesn't look. Come on. That is not me. Anyways, I just thought I'd show you guys that, because honestly, I feel like I scan my face in, I feel like it looks nothing like me. Anyways, maybe it does. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Anyways, guys, tip four, day four, what we're going to be doing today is I'm going to be talking to you guys about out-of-pack investing, all right? So cards that are investing in the gold cards that have been removed from packs due to a special card coming into packs, all right? So basically, the general thing around it is when a card gets a special card, its gold card gets removed from packs, all right? Only one version of that card can be in packs at a time. So an example is just an average card, seller. Okay, if Salah went and got a inform, his gold card would go out of packs. Or if Salah got a promo card, a screen card, or a whatever promo's out at the time, a team of the year, his gold card would go out of packs, right? And they go out of packs for as long as the special card is in packs. Now, as we all know what I always talk about, guys, when demand and supply, when demand's high, supply, when low, supply is lower than demand, prices rise, okay? And obviously, when supply is higher than demand, prices go down. So with a card being out of packs, it instantly rises, uh, lowers its supply, okay? So you might have a normal card that, you know, might be sitting at a steady price because demand and supply are pretty equal. So that card might be sitting at whatever, 5,000 coins. And it's pretty, it's pretty steady at 5,000 coins. Now you take that card out of packs. So it's out of packs for an entire week. Supply slowly drops down. And when supply drops, now supply is lower than demand causes the prices to rise, okay? So this especially works really, really well earlier on in the year. Late, once you get late in the year, like four, five, six months in, it still works, you can still make money, but obviously sometimes it's less money or you have to be careful which cards you're picking. Earlier on, it's a lot of the cards do quite well, um, just because by the, you know, later in the game, there's a large supply of a lot of cards, all right? especially early on in the game, the first few months of the game, very, very effective method. And I'll show you guys some graphs and give you guys some ideas like I like to do to kind of, you know, show you guys where I'm coming from while I'm doing this. Now, how you can use this to your advantage, guys, on a weekly basis, we get Team of the Week. Every Wednesday um, at 6 p.m. UK, we get a brand new Team of the Week, okay? Now, when Team of the Week comes out, the gold cards from those Team of the Week cards all go out of packs, Right? Obviously, the same thing happens with promos as well. So if you can predict what gold cards, all right, if you can predict what players are going to be in the team of the week and you invest in those players before they go out of packs, you can reap massive, massive rewards. Now, people probably say to me, well, I haven't got a crystal ball. How am I supposed to predict? Well, it's actually quite easy. EA follow a very simple system when uh, picking who goes into the team of the week, all right? They always balance it out. So they always have a, uh, at least two goalkeepers. They always have a few defenders. They always have a few midfielders. They always have a few attackers, right? So if you're putting, for instance, seven defenders, if you're predicting seven defenders, well, that's just not going to happen. Now, they always have a starting team as well, which is normally full of higher rated cards and a bench, which is normally full of like your lower rated, right? They mainly like to use main league players. So majority of the players that get into the team of the week will be from main leagues that are on the starting lineup. There will be a few bench ones that are from off leagues, but you get a lot of the major leagues as well. And then they also like to reward goals and assists, all right? For instance, if your player doesn't score, doesn't get an assist, but has a good game in terms of makes a lot of key passes, you know, makes a lot of tackles, that's not what EA look for. That person is not likely to get a team of the week, all right? EA look for goals and assists, all right? So the player that gets three goals, they're the player that's going to get in. You know, the defender who gets a clean sheet 
and and gets a goal, scores a goal as well for their team. They're going to get in. Not the defender who, you know, they get a clean sheet, they don't score, they don't assist, but maybe they just had, you know, some good clearances and stuff like that. They had a lot of clearances. That They're not likely to get it, all right? So they're the things you've got to look out for. Now, what's an easy way to predict this? And clearly, before I show you this, you can also do this method with promo cards. So when the promos come out, somebody getting a screen promo if there's a leak. So sometimes I get leaks and I'll, I'll share them with my stream or if... Um, you know, you just can predict because sometimes you can predict which cards are coming out in a promo and you invest in those beforehand. They're going to be out of packs as well. So that's also a really good thing. But I'm sticking to like mentioning team of the week because that's a weekly thing, all right? That's 100% every single week and it's very easy to predict. Now, what I'm going to show you guys is how you can help you to predict this. So as you can see here, I'm on a screen. So footbin.com, use it religiously. I love it, all right? If you go to footbin.com and you go to live and you go to team of the week contenders, what they do is they have already placed all of the players and ranked them by like goals and assists and things like that. All right. So that's how I do it. So you go to here and then I like to set them by position. So obviously, like I said, there's going to be a few defenders, a few forwards, a few midfielders. So you can easily just go, okay, forwards, click on the forwards. Now, these are all the forwards and what they've done. It ranks them by goals and assists. So he's got two. That's why he's on top. The rest of these guys have only got one, all right? Obviously, there's not many players playing right now, so it's hard to see. But once there's more players, teams playing, it'll be a lot more spread out. There'll be like, you know, four contributions, three, two, two. There won't just be a bunch of ones. And then it shows you the score line of the game. So what EA also look for is your team one. If you scored two goals but lost the game, and there's another player who scored a goal and assist or two goals but won the game, the player that won the game is more likely to get in, okay? So looking at this forwards, you know, you could probably predict that, you know, obviously Xavier here will most likely get in. Team one, got a goal and an assist, played the full game. You could pretty much guarantee a card like that's going to get in. So that's kind of like how you look at it, all right? And you've got to go through... And you can do it by positions. Very, very easy. I also put out predictions each week for you guys to help you guys out on what I, some of the team leagues I think will get in. So obviously, if you're on my stream, if you're on my Instagram and stuff like that, you'll see those and that can help you out anyways. Or if you're in my sub Discord, obviously, I'll be putting direct investments you can make. Um, but that is how I what I look at. And then I also just look at player ratings and stuff. Sometimes I'll, I'll double check those with the, with the player ratings online. To see what the player rated as. Now, what I want to show you guys is how some of these players move. So I picked a random team of the week, team of the week eight. Now, once again, I just picked random players, okay? Obviously, you know, for a player to go up, there needs to be some form of demand behind it, right? Yes, supply will drop when a card goes out of packs, but to make the biggest profit, you also want demand to be high for that card as well as supply going down. So there's no use investing in the gold card of a useless card. Like if I went and got his gold card, Fabra, it's like, well, why would anyone be buying his gold card? You know what I mean? Then you want to think of a reason why people would want to buy their gold card. So good reasons for maybe people wanting to buy a gold card and why you want to invest in that gold card is maybe that card is needed for a league SBC. So people need to buy that card in order to finish a league SBC. So demand is going to be right up here because people are regularly buying that card every day to do that league SBC, but there's no supply. And the supply is going to get less and less because people are buying that card and using it in SBCs. Maybe it's an SBC fodder. So maybe it's an 83, 84 rated gold card, which is regularly used in SBCs. All right. So it's an SBC fodder card. So once again, getting regularly demands high, it's getting regularly used in SBCs. So supply is getting lower and lower because they're not, they're not in packs. Or maybe it's just a meta card. Maybe the gold card is just a really meta card that people are using in their weekend league squads. For instance, of in FIFA 20 at the start of the year, a lot of people were using like an Usman Dembele. That was a very meta card everyone was using, right? So the demand was really, really high. If he went out of packs early in the year and there was no supply of that card for a week, I can guarantee you that card would have risen a lot just because there would have been so many people wanting to buy it and there would have been no supply of that card. All right, so there are the things you want to think about when you're looking into this. So I picked two cards anyways. I just clicked on, I just picked random cards as well because early on, a lot of these cards go up, man. If they're good leagues, good nations, a lot of them do uh, do well out of packs. So I clicked on Smalling 
um, and I clicked on Grimaldo. All right. Now I'm going to show you how they moved up. So this is his inform card. He got his inform card on the 6th of November. Okay. So what I did, and he was out of packs for a week. So what I did is I searched to the 2nd of November. So this was four days prior to him going out of packs on Saturday. He was 986, 11 on Sunday, 785 on Monday, 854 on Tuesday, 1168 on Wednesday. And that's where he went out of packs. Now look where he goes the very next day. From 1168 to, boom, one day later, 3329. So he rose double, more than double, actually. He rose like 250%. So you could legit, if you put 500,000 coins into that investment, you would have over doubled your money, right? You could have made 600,000, 700,000 profit. And he stays around there. He actually goes a little bit higher the longer he's out of packs. And then watch this. Tuesday, he goes back into packs on Wednesday and look at the drop. 3521, his last day out of packs. And then back in packs on the Wednesday. Boom, 873. So it drops from 3,500 to 873 just by going back into packs. Grimaldo, same thing. 6th of November was when his inform came out. So he went out of packs on the 6th of November. Once again, I searched for the 2nd of November just to give you a few days in advance. So on the 2nd, he was 3. 2-6 on Sunday, on the 3rd, on the 4th, he was 2-8, on the 5th, he was 2-7, on the Wednesday, he was 3-4, and that's where he goes out of packs. The very next day, after going out of packs, he went to 4-1. The next day after that, 6-50, 6 6,050 6, coins. The day after that, 7,222. The day after that, 7482. The day after that, 7572. And then Wednesday, so this is the day he goes back into packs, 7,000. And then he's back in packs, and boom, Thursday, back down to 46. So he basically went, if you had bought him the day before he went out of packs, you could have gotten him for 2,800 coins, and you could have sold him for 7,500. That is, once again, about a 250% increase. You could have over doubled your money on investment. All right, guys? So that's how simple it is, all right? Now, picking the cards that are best to invest in, like I said, you, you try and think of a reason, okay? Try and think to yourself before you go and buy the gold cards. Be like, well, what is the reasoning people would want this gold card? Early on in the game, because there's not much supply, most gold cards are going to rise. Even if there's not a reason for people to buy that gold card, the fact it's out of packs will probably make it rise anyways. But to get the most profit... You want to think about cards of why people might use it. Another example is in FIFA 20, a card that was regularly used, Ferlin Mendy. Ferlin Mendy was used by so many people. If that card went out of packs at the start of the year, that card would have rose, an, uh, rose a heap because so many people use it, okay? Just things like that. Anyways, that's the video, guys. Um, very, very handy method. Easy, easy way to make money. Um, you know, you've got to have a lot of these methods. So people ask me, oh, well, you're giving us all these methods. You're mentioning a lot of them, and there's a lot more. I've got a lot of methods to use. But you want them all. That's how you make consistent coins, right? You can't rely on making money on one method, all right? That is pretty much crazy, all right? That is pretty much crazy doing that, especially because things go wrong. Some weeks things go wrong. Maybe that investment, that weekly investment that normally works doesn't work a week. You want to split your money up through different investments. And this is ways you can make money all at different times, you know? So you can make money on a Thursday. You can make money on a Friday. You can make money on a Wednesday. You can make money on a Tuesday, all right? And you split your investments up. Um, and that can be, as you saw by there, by the percentage increases, very, very effective in making money. Anyways, I hope this helped you guys. Let me know if my explanations are a bit hard to follow or if they're good or... Exactly what, because obviously I want to try and bring you guys the best content that's easiest for you guys to understand. But yeah, if you liked the video, if it helps you out, uh, smash a like, guys. Subscribe to the channel. I really, really do appreciate you guys watching the video today. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.